Hi, I'm Paul, the Running Shoe Guru. This is Marathon Handbook, and today we're here in New Balance's UK head office in Warrington in the northwest of England. I'm joined by Jack. Jack is New Balance's tech rep. He's the, the midsole maestro. He knows his fresh forms from his fuel cells. So he's here to give us a little bit of a tech insight into some of the shoes, a bit more detail. And this is purely, like we've done with a few other brands, my selection of the best shoes from New Balance for various categories, various usages. First of all, we're gonna look at daily training shoes. Now, I think um, the staples of the New Balance, my personal favorites, if you're a neutral runner, the 880, and if require a little bit of support, the 860. Everyday training, I think these are two great value shoes that offer, depending on the type of runner, you know, everything that you need in an everyday kind of mileage shoe. Your 880 and your 860 are paired as that neutral and that stability side. So in terms of foams and sort of uh, the cushion on each one, they are relatively similar. The main difference is that inside piece on that 860. You can just see on this arch here, you've got this slightly denser piece piece of foam uh, which is called a medial arch support essentially for those pronators it just stops you sort of over rolling on that inside it, it does work very well and I, I find when I use um, get analysis for runners that the medial posting there is whilst it's a quite traditional method of providing control it's still very effective in this shoe yeah. and it provides good results for people that do over pronate rotate inwards it's very subtle as well in this shoe people don't put it on and notice it's there yeah so yeah, i think it just does a job without it and that and that's the main reason like for the supportive shoes is they're not supposed to feel completely alien compared to like your new yeah. counterpart it should almost be doing it without you realizing and you should be able to run naturally without having to think about Oh, am I rolling in and that sort of thing? The shoe should just do the work for you. Let's talk a little bit about all the forms as well, because there, there's so many. I get confused with them sometimes. So on these shoes, we've got Fresh Form X, mm. which is the kind of the latest generation of Fresh Form yeah. cushioning material. It's more than everyday cushioning. Yeah. yeah. So the Fresh Foam, Fresh Foam X, being the newest one, is basically our daily training foam. So it's more durable than the racing foam. So you still get like a decent amount of mileage out of each shoe. Yeah, you do have slightly different compounds. So uh, Fresh Foam is almost an umbrella term for yeah. our, our training shoes. So there are slight differences in densities between like your 860s, 880s, and then like your 1080s and things like that. But essentially, it follows the the reason for the shoe. So. If a 1080 is more cushioned than an 880, the foam is going to be slightly softer because it's going for that slightly more cushioned ride. But essentially, fresh foam is that umbrella term for all of our training foams. The compound and the base compound are start the same, but they have different densities and different harnesses. It can get very sort of techy if you sort of you'll end up spiraling down this sort of uh, this tech route. But just know that each foam is slightly different for the reason and it backs the shoe with what it wants to do. The drop on the 880 and the 860 is 10mm, just gives you a little bit of that roll, gets you into your cadence a little yeah. bit, particularly because it's a slightly lower profile shoe than some of the others in our range as well. So as far as everyday trainers go, the stack is similar to pretty much all the competitors from all over the yeah. end yeah. you know. And certainly for the neutral runners, 880 would be a great choice for daily miles. And if you need a little bit of support, the 860. In terms of the best overall cushioned shoe from New Balance, there's only ever going to be one choice for me, and it was going to be the 1080. Now, I've been running in these for about two weeks now, and it is a very soft, very plush cushioned max cushion neutral shoe it does feel a little bit more stable than the previous version to me and i just loved it i mean it is so soft and plush it's got a nice bit of bounce to it it's not like an ultra springy shoe yeah. you know i've been running more in it than my, my neutral shoes and it's been doing the job it's just been such a nice comfy enjoyable ride the compile for this fresh foam is is unbelievably soft it does have a different feel to it it yeah. does have a yeah. springiness so we're we particularly comparing it to like your v12 that's uh, uh that's has just been replaced so you've got 10 mil extra in the heel so you've gone from 22 to 32 mil in the heel so adding that with a slightly softer compound that's where that sort of feeling of that really soft and yeah. that heel comes in is a drop on it greater then yeah so the drop has come down by two millimeters oh, you know the v12 was 
was an eight mil drop. This is a six mil drop. Wow, so, so I didn't notice that at all. Probably the main reason that you've not noticed it as well is we've increased the rocker in the shoe as well. So even though the shoe is slightly flatter in terms of it doesn't drop from heel to toe by two mil as much anymore, that rocker makes you sort of rotate through just as it and what before. So one of the big things as well is the actual pattern on the outsole has been designed and heat spotting as well. Yeah, I felt that as well. So yeah. if you notice, it kind of rotates across the shoe medially a little bit. Yeah, and I think that kind of helps your foot roll off a yeah. bit more. It gives that forefoot a bit of stiffness. So yeah. you've got this really soft heel, but then as you transition into the forefoot, you have this stiffer yeah. forefoot, which allows you for a greater toe off. And then say the, the big thing from the V12 to the V13 is, even though you've got a load more foam in there, it's actually 30 grams lighter. So it's a really, really big update. It allows you to sort of m maintain like being on your toes with it only being 262 grams. It's a really light shoe for the fact that you've got a 32 mil heel in there. So that's a lot of foam for not a lot of weight. Yeah, it does. I think the, the combination of the foam, the rocker, the shape, the small off through the toe as well, it does make it a really soft, smooth kind of shoe. I was away on holiday for a few days last week. I did take this as my one shoe to wear. And one of the days I did kind of a mini interval session. That analogy, it suits the story of the 1080. If you're going to pick one shoe to do it all, the 1080 is where it's at. You can do your long runs, but you can also progress into sort of tempo, up tempo types because it is light lighter and you still have that bounce so new kind of redesigned upper this feels very plush feels very well made yeah and quite an expensive feel to it i like the heel turn very nice and soft and squeaky there i mean it just wraps around the foot beautifully it complements the shoe as just a super plush everyday long mileage versatile trend shoe yeah i think that padding particularly to the heel and to the tongue as well yeah just means that you have in that feeling a lot of the time from the the previous versions we've sort of had that what we call step in feel so that initial feel yeah. and is, is is amazing in this ship yeah so 1080 v13 probably the best everyday plush neutral cushioning I'm choosing this one as the best value everyday shoe, perhaps for new runners, perhaps for people that just want one pair of shoes to do everything, a few easy miles for the longer run, interval sessions, or a little race. The Propel. This is a fuel cell. It's a kind of faster base shoe, but it is more of a versatile trainer as well. And it's, you know, it's got a nylon plate in there, not a carbon plate, but good value, 120 pounds in the UK. You're getting a bit more of that snack than you would do in your, in your fresh road range. So adding that with your nylon plate just means that you can sort of easy jog in it because it's a nice soft shoe, but it has the ability to be a racer or a very fast, like tempo session type shoe. So it has the broad, range in terms of what the shoe can do the sort of caveat that comes with the with the fuel cell foam compared to your fresh room is that durability but they do have slightly thicker outsole pieces yeah and to the racer shoes and good coverage as well for yeah length of the shoe which is something i do like so then adding that nylon in as well means that you have that sort of that snap and that response as well without having to have the price point of the carbon that makes the shoe so expensive so keeping it at 120 is a very entry level shoe yeah the upper is very simple it's not nothing nothing fancy but it fits well it flares away on the heel there. I do like that kind of flaring away from the Achilles on the heel tab. Simple, but I think that makes it more durable as well. For someone that does want a, just a general all-rounder, any pace, great choice. And, and a lot of technical features in there for the money. You've still got 31 mil in the heel. You're getting up to that max cushion side. Just means that there's a lot of foam in there for that soft ride, so you can do your longer runs in there. It's not like you're wearing some sort of like all low profile sort of racing flat. A lot of tech and a lot of different things stacked into this shoe. Maintaining that 120 means that when you are comparing it like previously with the 1080, uh, it would have like a really sort of high quality upper, whereas this is sort of, it's stripped back a little bit, but it's still high quality, but it means that we can control that price a lot more and bring it down. Yeah. The shape of the nylon plate got little flares up a little bit on the side as well, as you can see here. I think that gives it a little bit of stability as well. And through the medial side, it fits well through the so whilst it is a neutral shoe, it does provide general support. Just a very good value for money, versatile trainer. This is a kind of a category that's developing more and more, and it's come on the back of the super shoes, but we've now got super trainer categories. One of the first ones of those, the Fuel Cell SC Trainer V1 last year, which had a 50 mil stack high, an illegal shoe if you like. Now we've got the V2, 40 mil, I love the first version of the shoe and I did actually do a marathon in that shoe and won it in fact um, it was a downhill marathon but I chose it because of the 50 mil 
So it's kind of almost a, a race that doesn't count in a shoe that doesn't count. And this shoe has been even better. Every single tempo interval session from April to September, I did in this shoe. 40 mil stack, energy art carbon plate. It just, for me, feels very balanced. It's a shoe that I can just cruise along in. It just does the job and feels great. Yeah, as you say, from my side, I've been something that has the ability to sort of turn over, but it's not as aggressive as those racing shoes, sort of. You feel like you're almost, well, I say, floating down a nice sort of tempo pace, so it just feels really, really smooth. So, SE being super comp, so everything from New Balance side that has super comp in the name is carbon fiber. That's where that sort of comes in. So, with it being the super comp trainer, it's that training version of that race shoe, so you'll have a little bit of more padding on the upper. The race shoes, a lot of them is about weight savings, so sometimes they don't fit as comfy and that sort of type thing, so. With these being slightly more padded, it feels like a proper shoe that you still get that benefit yeah. out of. Is the configuration of the Energy Art Carbon Plate in the shoe the same as the Elite? There is a difference in the sort of geometry of this with the drop being 6mm rather than the 4 that's in the racer. You've got slight differences, but the trainer, it's less aggressive than the racing shoe, so it feels a little bit more padded on the forefoot in particular, so you don't feel like you're sort of on that toe all the time and yeah. being down. So no, there are slight differences in geometry, but the baseline is the same. Still got that energy arc in the void in the middle. One of the main differences is actually the thickness um, of the actual two pieces of foam to the side. They're a lot thicker in the on the rain over the head to the race. So if we pull that racer up, you can have sort of see that difference in the side there. So a lot more stable than that race here, yeah. which just helps that float difference there. Best New Balance Tempo Interval Fast Training Shoe Fuel Cell Supercon V2. In the road shoe category, fuel cell, super comp, SC, elite, V3. Yeah, honestly, it comes with a lot of, a lot of names, but they sort of, um, each one sort of categorizes it. Yeah, way. so the best New Balance, the, 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 the pinnacle racing shoe from New Balance, fuel cell form, carbon, energy arc, plate in there. The way the energy arc is shaped contributes to its kind of effectiveness and how it yes. differs to yeah. other shoes. Yeah. You can see it's kind of scooped inside here so it's not just a flat plate as well as curving through the shoe as well yeah a lot of the times that's the, that's the main question we get is that what is the difference between like a new balance shoe compared to other uh companies sort of carbon racing shoes it's the technology that we put into them so having we call it the void which is this gap down the middle that's basically uh been added to a cambered plate so you've got your s shape coming from low to high uh on that sort of uh on the side but then yeah. the actual plate is also that uh, concaved across so essentially when you load the shoe you're not only loading the forefoot for springing you forward you're also loading the plate that is out like this and pushing down so you're getting two uh like ways of compression yeah so you have that forefoot spring but then you also got that compression of the actual plate itself doubling up on that compression force that you put into that load every single time so it does have a slightly different feel to a lot of carbon plate races but it's nice it's very smooth riding this smooth is always the word i go for yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it doesn't feel quite as aggressive but for longer distances it's only half marathon and up yeah it, it, it's the go-to you've used this kind of one piece up yes. there it kind of works very well you've got a lot of stretch on the the integrated tongue on yours more so than some bands um and it, it, it doesn't create an issue sometimes this kind of application does bunch up a lot and it does make it very difficult to get into mm. not any issues with that fast yeah. smooth um, and energized and under weight saving uh, as well like you do have that sort of this is that, that sock upper on that side so pairing that with how thin the material and everything is of these of the, the nature of these shoes to be light and to be fast so you do have those sort of those cutouts in certain places and things like that so like a lot of the time we sort of we get people sort of like that i talk to uh with work is like they didn't realize that you could have some like a race issue that's also comfortable some people have this mindset that you're sacrificing comfortable uh yeah and for a fast shoe but you can complete stepping comfort is really nice on this compared to a lot of racing shoes it's not necessarily a bad thing i'll put some cam plate shoes on you instantly know that you know you've got to get going but this it, it feels very plush when you step in so it kind of eases in, into it. So I think that's why it kind of works well over the longer distance. Yeah. Best racer, New Balance, Fuel Cell, Supercomp, Elite, V3.
Fail is such a varied and complex category now, and there's so many shoes. So the first shoe is the Fuel Cell Super Comp Trail. For me, when I got this shoe, I thought it was going to be the perfect trail shoe. I was only going to choose one trail shoe in this selection. I don't run that much on the trails. When I do, I don't run mega miles, maybe like 10 miles max. I like this one. I like the SC Trainer. This is essentially that shoe with a vibrant sole at yep. the bottom. The SC Trail is essentially taking that sort of the SC Elite, the SC Trainer, and applying the trail side to it. So that vibrant mount sole on the outside. Yeah. Um, Another one is the fact that the stack height isn't as high, so you're at 31 in the heel compared to your 40s that you've got on the road. And essentially, when you get into a technical trail, if you're at 40 mil stack height underneath, you might have uh, some ankle problems and yeah. like that. So it's been slightly tailored towards that as well. That always is a big consideration. I think that's why trail is such a complex area. Your own trails where you live can vary depending on the weather. So if you have a few days of rain where I am, it's a totally different shoe requirement. Yeah. That said, I do stick really more to gravelly, kind of firmer trails and not the muddy trails, which some people do love, you know? Yeah, I say all the same sort of, say for where I live, that, tra that Trans Pennine flat sort of gravelly type route and yeah. it can get quite hard in the summer. So yeah. the main thing is that it's still fuel cell, so it's really soft and really responsive, but it's able to take a technical trail if it gets a bit muddy or if you go onto sort of early technical runs, it still has the capability to do that because it's not a max, max stack shoe. So with that in mind then, I'm going to now switch up my selection a little bit. I'm going to make that the trainer fast running trail shoe and the, the other shoe, the more trail V3. So so this is the kind of max stack trail running shoe, you know, we've got the vibe and saw on that again. There is a more road shoe version, but I think the simplest description, it does feel to me like the 1080 a little bit. That same high stack cushioning, rocker, deep cushioning, just so comfy. Before the 1080 V13 came out, because it's a very recent shoe, it was the more for the trail, but the new 1080 is probably even closer to the stack height. You do have the same sort of story as the as the Super Comp with this one as well, where they've slightly tailored. So you've got the more V4, which is the road version, and they've essentially tailored that into a trail shoe. Mm -hmm. Now, sort of dropping the stack height similar to the way that they've done with this. So it's 30.5 in the heel rather than your 34 and a half that you've got on the roadside, just to make it a little bit more stable. Stable. The one of the big points as well is actually if you look at the sole here, the different colour is actually a different density on the foam. Oh really? So the bottom foam is slightly denser than the upper foam, so essentially you have that stability bottom half in there as well. Uh -huh. The more before on the roadside is a very stable shoe as it is, but they've had to sort of increase that a little bit for that trip. It did surprise me because the previous versions of the more felt a little bit unstable. Now I'm surprised how stable this one did feel yeah. noticeably. And it is almost like a double down on that stability side yeah. and you can sort of see particularly under the arch of the foot how wide yeah the base is and you've got the kind of these the, the way it lips the foot sat about there so you've got these yeah side walls side row uh, mapping up and then but yeah you're seeing a little cup underneath as well so there's a lot of stability features in this trail shoe because you don't have a neutral and stability split on the trail sides because you have yeah. to be ready for all terrains a lot of them are more stable just naturally with the way that they're built for that requirement best new balance training trail the fresh form more trail v3 yeah and the fuel cell sc trail so that concludes it hope you've enjoyed it comment below like follow all that and share any questions i will endeavor to answer as always thanks for watching